We're back on JB and Co. This time with the one and only Tinker Hatfield, a man who's turned sneakers into objects of desire. One of the world's most legendary sneaker designers who is also the VP of design and special projects at Nike. He's also known for collaborating with Michael Jordan to bring us Air Jordan 3 through 15 and other landmark Nike designs. Thanks for spending time with us today, Tinker. My, my pleasure, Jared. <laughs> I appreciate it. Now, Tinker, uh, as we were just talking about, you know, off the record, uh, I had the chance to meet you at Santa Clara University. Um, you actually had the opportunity to redesign our court. And um, yeah. I just want to say thank you for that because our old design was getting a little, um, a little old. It was, it was it, the look just wasn't, it wasn't clean. And I felt like we needed somebody to come in and redesign it. So that way, uh, you know, my shot may feel a little bit better. So I appreciate you go. during that time. Yeah, I, I, I hope to get some credit for all those three pointers and all that stuff. So you definitely, <laughs> you definitely get the credit. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about that design because obviously it was a unique design because it's uh, the first of its kind and a school um, put in a campus building onto the floor. And for Santa Clara University, that building was uh, our mission church. Can you tell us where the idea came from and, and how you felt about your execution? Well, you know, I have uh, been to the Bay Area many, many times. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of those times uh, uh, have been to Palo Alto, uh, Stanford University and um, but uh, but there are a lot of there are a lot of young people from this uh, where, from uh, the Portland area where I live that um, go have gone to Santa Clara and some really close friends and so I had been there a couple of times um, and I couldn't uh, I, could, I couldn't remember I don't remember meeting that many people but I just was struck by the beauty the, the beauty of the campus and the, the sort of the Spanish mission style. And um, I thought that um, without knowing that much that I could try and represent um, the school in a, uh, in a way that was uh, a little bit about um, the faith and a little bit about the architecture and kind of the combination of those things that help create uh, or make young people um, whole. So, uh, so anyway, that's kind of the, the, the that's a, that's, uh, for lack of a better explanation, that's that's where I went. Yeah, well, I like that. And uh, we definitely have uh, probably uh, similar connections because obviously Renee Baumgartner, who also uh, works at Santa Clara University. Came, yeah, that's right. Came from Oregon. And then also uh, a girl who was uh, in my grade or a year younger who I, I got to know, uh, her name is Peyton Hill and her father. Uh, oh, sure. To, yeah. Yeah. It used to work at Nike. So so definitely uh, some some similarities. There. Yeah. <laughs> um, her, her father, um, Elliot, is Elliot, Elliot Hill, who is yes. um, one of our top top leaders and yes. is now retired. But um, yeah. Yeah. So there I know a little bit about Santa Clara again from some of the some of the young people that have gone there and uh, and their parents um, uh, speak of it very highly. So uh, I was inspired by the by the place. So yeah, Very cool. Well, the design turned out great and I know I loved it and I know everybody else loved it. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I tried not to be too weird like the one in Oregon. Um, yeah. Uh, maybe you've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> I didn't want to mess you guys up too much. <laughs> you didn't want too much going on. Yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> well, well, I have to tell you that the one I did at Oregon with that, the, the, the forest uh, that rings the, the floor, um, there are, there are lovers and there are haters of that floor, um, which was mm -hmm. really kind of purposeful because um, uh, I, I wanted to give Oregon um, uh, like a competitive advantage. So when people weren't used to that crazy floor, um, they, they might be a little bit off. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I like but that. But I felt like, like I felt like that wasn't the right approach for Santa Clara. I felt like uh, it should it should be much more about the, the place and the be the beauty, and then of course again the people and uh, and uh, the, the faith based um, organization that uh, that you know runs the place. So um, I thought that was it was just appropriate. So there you go. <laughs> for sure. For sure. And, and while we're on the topic of sports, obviously me playing basketball, you actually uh, played sports back in your day. You uh, uh, pole vaulted uh, at the University of Oregon. And I think uh, Bill Bowerman was your coach, who was actually the founder uh, of Nike. Uh, what have you taken from sports back when you used to play 
And what do you what have you taken from sports and transitioned it into your corporate world that you still use today? Uh, that's a great question, Jared. I, I think sports is such a great teacher of many things. And, um, you know, I think, about, I think about when I was in high school, my father was my coach actually in uh, track. Although I played football and basketball, he was my track coach. And then when I went to Oregon and I uh, was on the track team, uh, Bill Bowerman was my coach. And, um, and from each one of those people, uh, those guys, those, those, those leaders, those, te- those mentors. Um, I learned from my father, I learned, I learned something unique or not unique, but uh, very powerful, but I didn't, I didn't, uh, it didn't dawn on me at the time, but he was really a taskmaster. I really learned how to work hard. Mm-hmm. And so, and, and being in sports, uh, you, you know, you can't, no matter how talented you are, you have to, you have to work at it. You and because somebody, there's always going to be somebody that's maybe nearly or just as talented, uh, but if they've worked harder, they're going to beat you. Exactly. And so working hard is, is, is key. So I learned that from my dad. When I went to Oregon I, uh, with Bill Bowerman, um, I learned how, how to uh, be smart uh, uh, to compete in a, and train uh, with, with, uh, with purpose. Um, it wasn't, it's not, it, the message started to change from just working hard to, also, to working hard, but also working smart, mm-hmm. staying healthy, uh, peaking at the right time and being able to compete at your highest level on game day. Mm. And that was something that was a little bit more sophisticated. So I learned that. And that's a really good thing to, to, uh, to pass along to anybody who's uh, trying to get ahead in this world is that um, you, have to, uh, you have to work hard, but you also have to kind of understand the lay of the land, know what you're doing and, and have goals and, 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 a, and, a, and a logical and, and complete sort of plan to get, to get where you need to go. Mm-hmm. That's what I learned from Bill Bowerman. Um, he was quite uh, um, just a, a brilliant coach in that way. Mm-hmm. And then um, uh, uh, when, I went, when I went to Nike after all of that, um, Phil, uh, Phil Knight, um, and he, by the way, he, Phil Knight, the, the other founder of Nike, he told me um, that uh, working hard is great, working smart is great, um, but you, I, I sure hope you, I hope you love doing what you're doing. And yeah. um, so, so that's the third leg of the stool is like mm-hmm. you work hard, you work smart with purpose, and then um, you work with passion and 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 love for whatever whatever you've chosen to be to be mm-hmm. doing. So, so that, that's a, those those are all uh, lessons that help you be a good good, good athlete. Mm-hmm. But they're so transferable to to everything that we do in life. Mm-hmm. So, so there there's that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I find that unique and, and it's something that I definitely want to ask, uh, obviously, with me being an athlete and and for for those who will watch this video that are athletes. Uh, so that way they can hear from people who are in the corporate world, people of your stature uh, to explain what it is they should transfer over from sports. And I know that uh, I had previously had on the LinkedIn CFO and he used to play sports and, and he was able to, to give a great answer too. And I just think it's helpful because I think as athletes, you know, once you play for so long, uh, you know, eventually it's, you know, the ball's gonna stop dribbling or whatever it is that you play. So you kind of want to have an idea headed into the corporate world, what skills to transfer over and, and, and how to best uh, utilize everything you learn from, from the world of sports. Without question, without question, and and uh, I do I do feel like my success at Nike is directly related related to my experiences in sport. Um, mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, perfect. That's great to know. Great to know. Now, Tinker, as a designer, uh, I'm sure you're motivated by your creativity, um, but I'm sure you've also been motivated by either a pair of shoes or or, or a specific product. Can you tell us what it was what it was that ultimately led you uh, down this career path? Well, I, I went to school in, the, uh, uh, in architecture. I got a degree in architecture and I, um, then I worked as an intern architect and then I was able to take my state exams. And after a number of years, I became a, a licensed architect. Um, and then uh, that was really my first uh, job at Nike. I was the corporate architect. I got hired to be the corporate architect. And um, so that's kind of, um, kind of uh, a little bit of my history in that um, I learned 
uh, a lot about design through architecture, which is which is really a rich way to sort of look at life. Also, you know, how do you provide space, comfortable space, and and or meaningful space um, for people to live in? And uh, those things all kind of added up um, for me. And uh, so uh, then I switched over to footwear design after about almost five years at Nike. Um, so for about five years, I was the corporate architect. And then, uh, so I'm, I'm sneaking up on 40 years at Nike. Uh, so it's been a while since I was the corporate architect. Yeah. Um, uh, but I still, I still feel like um, uh, the lessons learned um, there are, were helpful uh, mm -hmm. in terms of problem solving and, and, and process and trying to understand um, you know, you know, what people need. And you know what people need in, in footwear and, and apparel for, for athletics um, is is unique. Um, but what what else, what people uh, but the process to get there is the same if you're designing a building. Mm -hmm. So you need to understand the people and what they need and what they want and what what is going to can work for them. So mm -hmm. it all just sort of wrapped up nicely for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's very interesting, and it's funny that you brought up you know the you know how some architects um create buildings or design buildings I, I i'm not an architect by any means but uh i always find pleasure um especially in chicago because i'm here you know majority of the time just uh looking at the buildings uh that people have made and, and i know one architecture one architect that um i follow uh just created uh the saint regis um building down here which is still which is almost being done which is almost done being made um, mm -hmm. it's something that, you know, I just, I find beauty in looking at these buildings and, and, and the way people design them. So I wanted to ask you, did you ever have any, uh, thoughts of creating a building? Well, uh, it just so happens I have, uh, created some buildings, um, and some for Nike and, uh, some for some private residences and, um, uh, I've designed, um, a stadium, um, so I've got I've got a I've got a fair even though I'm not licensed I, I can still design an architecture and I still do, um, and all I the, and uh, the reason I don't have my license anymore is it's really difficult to continue you have to have uh, continuing education like being a doctor you have to sort of yeah. keep uh, uh, going back for more classes and things like that and uh, I just ran out of time so I I gave up my license but it uh, it didn't prevent me from continuing to be an ar an architect actually so mm -hmm. i i still i'm st i'm designing um a vacation home for somebody right now so yeah. so so it's um it's just a process and if you understand the process and then you need to understand who you who you you know who you're trying to um solve problems for so it works out and i have uh I have good friends um, in the architecture world all over all over the world, actually. And uh -huh. uh, all right, Chicago is a unique is a unique and beautiful city in part because it burned down and uh, they were able to rebuild it um, with real purpose. And it, it's a logical, it's kind of a logical and beautiful city in part because they kind of got a fresh start at it at one point. Um, I spent time uh, in uh, in downtown, but also a good friend of mine, maybe you know him, is uh, uh, Scoop Jackson, you know Scoop, Scoop the writer. Jackson. Hey, I know Scoop Jackson. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he and he lives in uh, um, South Chicago, and so I've spent some time down there. I've been over to his house, and um, and there's some beautiful homes down that way, mm -hmm. um, different, uh, varied kinds of neighborhoods, and yeah. so I really, I really enjoy exploring Chicago. It's really an interesting uh, uh, place to to. Um, I'll get on a bike and ride around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. <laughs> well, one of the cities I'm looking forward to to spending more time in, at is uh is is Oregon, uh Portland, Oregon. Um just because I know every time we took a trip there to go play them, I always found interest uh in the city. And uh yeah, I, yeah. I was hoping to get out there this year, but obviously, you know, everything's been put on yep. hold. But um we my girlfriend and I have a lot of friends out there. So I, uh, hopefully next summer. Uh, we get a chance to actually spend some time out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think Portland is a city that um, is um, kind of a uh, a miniature big city. It's it's like a big city, but it isn't doesn't have um, doesn't it's not immense. Exactly. And, uh, and out of control, but yet it feels like a real city. So I think it's a nice uh, kind of combination of 
being a being a big city but not being quite so crazy so mm -hmm. it's good it's a good place exactly. I, I i've been here a long time <laughs> yeah well, i look forward to visiting uh tinker i want to know where do you draw your inspiration from and how has that changed from when you first started in the business until now yeah well that's a great question because uh inspiration is is kind of the um the first first step i think for a lot of things that we do whether we choose to become athletes or um, you choose to build houses or, or drive a taxi or whatever. Uh, you have to be inspired about something. And for me, you know, when I sit down to design a project, um, I have to have, I do have to have kind of a, a list of criteria of, so that helps me with problem solving, but it really doesn't capture, it really doesn't take off until I find an inspiration. And mm. sometimes the inspiration comes directly from a, a particular athlete Mm -hmm. um, you could say Michael Jordan, uh, uh, as an example, was was such a an amazing player and person that just his just being around him was inspiring. But uh, I usually found that uh, that it helped though to have two two storylines with each shoe. Uh, as an example, I'd be maybe inspired by uh, Michael Jordan uh, and uh, some you know the way he. Uh, the way his game evolved, and I, uh, I remember thinking about him as being like a fighter plane, uh, who would just strafe, strafe the enemy. Yeah. Uh, but he kind of hover around, and then he'd, then he'd strike. And uh, so that's inspiration. Now, yeah, that's an inspiration. But uh, but I also might add in, uh, well, oh, I might add in a detail from one of his cars mm -hmm. or something that um, was a little bit of uh, also a part of his life. Um, and then it was uh, carefully woven into the design. So it could be inspired by music as well or, or architecture. And it, it just comes from all over the place. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that I find so interesting in designers is that you guys are able to take uh, these ideas, uh, information, and uh, being able to take an athlete's embodiment, uh, you know, what they stand for, who they are, sure. how, how they play. And you're able to take all those things jumble them all together and, and, and splash out these ideas through the uh, uh, through the equipment that they wear, whether it be their shoes or whether right. uh, their clothing. And I, I think that's really interesting. So you kind of just touched on the creative process right there and, and what inspires you. Is there anything else that you would say ties along into that creative process uh, that that maybe we don't know about? Because I, I have seen a few videos of you ex you explaining, you know, uh, the ideas of coming up with the Jordan shoes, you and Michael coming up with the Jordan shoes. And then I've also seen yeah. videos of uh, Eric Avar and Kobe Bryant explaining uh, shoe yeah. style and design and how they came up with their Kobe. So is there any other layers or elements of the creative process that you say go into it? Yeah, well, those two guys are great because and I've also designed with Kobe as well. And um, they're very, actually quite similar in that, in that they're very uh, meticulous people who are quite prepared to play the game, but also they're looking for any edge that they can. Mm -hmm. and, and they actually understood the, the, the need to have better, better shoes. And um, so that was, so, so those two were in particular um, uh, are no, noteworthy because they, they, they did so well. And in part because they, they really took care of all the details, mm -hmm. even, even being involved in their shoe design. Um, uh, ins inspiration, though, um, uh, is uh, um, almost spiritual at times. You kind of uh, don't even know where it comes from, and you you can, um, you know, you can j just sort of get a vibe. Uh, and music is good for that. Music is good uh, because um, it, it just inspires a person to be uh, upbeat, um, or 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 it could inspire you to be melancholy. But um, either way, um, you know, I think the world around us, I used to, I always, well, I normally say that uh, every time I sit down to design a project, um, it's really kind of a culmination. When I, whatever I draw uh, and, you know, think about is really a culmination of pretty much everything that I've seen and done in my life up to that point. Mm. So if you think about, um, oh, you know, trying to design new, new projects, if you keep meeting new and interesting people and going to new and different places and, and uh, stretching yourself into uh, doing things that you wouldn't normally do, um, it gives you a tremendous amount of, um, of uh, oh, ammunition really to, to um, fire away at, at, the, at the computer and get, get designs down. And it kind of like, I never run out of ideas, but because I keep doing 
new stuff all the time and mm -hmm. meeting new people. Exactly. So those are those are important parts of my process for sure. Well, that's very interesting to know because I know a lot of us, you know, we we put the shoes on, but we look at them, we kind of wonder like, how did they come up with these ideas? So <laughs> great to hear you talk. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's one of the one of the other parts of design is that uh, um, it really, uh, and I think it's true for uh, other professions, but. Uh, you know, it's kind of a, it's about storytelling uh, as mm -hmm. much as it is about performance. Yeah. And uh, we know that uh, athletes um, are really uh, proud of, of being involved in a design or being inspired by one uh, and, and then choosing their own style. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's, that's a decision that um, is very personal. And, and, uh, you know, we try to, we try to design a lot of different projects um, that uh, give people options so you know, mm. it's pretty interesting. I once designed a shoe for, for Dennis Rodman. Oh, I love Dennis. <laughs> oh man. And, uh, but he didn't really, he didn't really want to, it was really just the opposite of working with Michael. He really didn't want to meet uh, too much. Um, and you know, he's just a different cat. So, yeah. um, so uh, I designed this shoe up that was real kind of gritty and kind of a little bit crazy looking. And I put the swoosh on it backwards. Was the, and Nike Legal did not like the idea that I put the swoosh on, uh, uh, kind of pointing in the wrong direction. <laughs> um, and but when I showed the shoe to Dennis, um, he liked it because he understood yeah. that I understood that he was uh, was always interested in taking a different path than everybody else. Mm -hmm. So the fact that the swoosh was going in the wrong direction actually resonated with him. Mm -hmm. And yet it also was inspired by him. So mm -hmm. there, there's, there's another example wow. very, and very, very different from then, than yeah. working, you know, with uh, Michael or say Kobe. Yeah. Um, but, but still interesting. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting. I love, I love these examples because I didn't know that. And obviously uh, Dennis Rodman is a, uh, is, is, is a unique character. Um, but he, he, he was a guy who obviously, um, you know, put his stamp on the NBA culture. And I think, yeah. I think we saw that and, and it was displayed throughout the, uh, the Last Dance documentary. So obviously we've talked about Dennis Rodman. We've talked about Michael Jordan a little bit. Um, so I wanted to ask you, um, what is your relationship like with Michael Jordan? Obviously, we know you guys are close, but how would you describe, you know, you and his relationship? And, and what were your thoughts after watching the, the Last Dance documentary? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a great question, uh, Jared, <laughs> because, um, you know, at first, you know, um, at first, Michael was uh, suspect. <laughs> uh, he, who is this guy? I don't and, know about uh, this guy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about this guy. I don't know, you know. Uh, but, um, uh, but uh, you know, I had to kind of prove myself and, and uh, really sort of show him that I had not only ideas, but I had professional skills to get a project done and done quickly and, and uh, and the one thing that uh, Michael uh, has a great memory. And if you say you're gonna do something, he will remember if you don't do it, he, he, will, he will call you out on it. And so I really, uh, I really had to always be on my toes and always uh, deliver and, and do, what I, do what I said I was gonna do. Mm -hmm. um, so that's it, kind of, it's, um, I don't know, I, I, I'm not sure I answered your question, but it's, it's uh, it, this, this whole process of, um, trying to um, solve problems and and try and then infuse personality is uh is not easy to do and a lot of a lot of designers um, um kind of default to pro solving the problems mm -hmm. and then then drawing it up the way that they just think that the way they think things should look mm -hmm. and i'm different i i try and solve the problems make a better product but also uh try and draw 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 it up so that um there's a story and the story it comes from someplace else than me, mm -hmm. and uh, and that way other people uh, people can kind of attach themselves to that to the story, and uh, so you know it's just um, just a I think I might have been one of the first shoe designer, designers way back when to even do that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think people thought of uh, shoes as having a personality so much. Yeah. So. No, that's 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 really great. And and did you feel like the Last Dance documentary uh, depicted, oh, yeah. <laughs> depicted Michael Jordan in the in the way that you know him? 
<laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I, that's that's the part of the question I didn't get to. Um, uh, um, so I've been been uh, so I over the years I, you know, year after year after year I kept producing you know good products and that, Michael and I became uh, I think closer and closer as um, and I would go stay at his house and. Uh, in Chicago, in Highland Park, you know, Highland Park, yeah, no, yeah, up there, um, and uh, drive to the games, um, and he'd stop and talk to some kids, or he, I mean, he was just a real cool part of the community, um, and uh, so we became friends that way, and, and and whenever I really needed to to um, you know kind of pick his brain, he would just say, "Come on out and just stay for a few days and just hang out," and so th- that was really uh, an honor. And it was fun, and uh, the his house always there's always somebody else in the house. Like uh, any 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 uh, on one end of the scale it could be Jay Z hanging out, <laughs> and on the other end of the scale could be Warren Sapp, you yeah. know, football player who's who's like a sneakerhead, and uh, and and it was always very interesting to be in that in the company of people like that. Charles Barkley might be there or something, and. Um, you know, I, I uh, most of the time um, was uh, just trying to be a good observer, you know, not not so much trying to. So I think uh, so I think um, I think that worked out well over the years. And and uh, the last watching the last dance was uh, was that was a beautifully done uh, story, a story about which had different narratives kind of blended all in, you know, from Phil Jackson's and, and Dennis Rodman and, the, and kind of what was going on in Detroit. And then of course, Michael himself and some of the drama around uh, just people trying to figure out how to win, how to work together. And mm-hmm. I loved it. I, I, cause I um, was, um, what's that movie? Uh, 20 feet from fame or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of like, I was always like, 10 or 15 or 20 feet away from all that drama yeah (laughs) (laughs) and which was purposeful because I did not want to be in the drama I wanted to be professional and I wanted to get the job done and I didn't I didn't really want to certainly uh assert myself in any way at all um so that's part of being a professional so no so but I really enjoyed um the last dance and uh brought back a lot of memories because um, in some of the shots, I was probably just out of just out of range of the camera, uh, you know, and uh, so I remember being there for some yeah. of that stuff. You know? Yeah, that, well, that was one of my favorite parts, you know, just him, you know, sitting in that in that room that he does that he sits in with uh, all the security guards before every game, and and he, may, oh yeah, you no, know, he may be tying up his shoes, and I'm just like, oh, that's crazy. I said Tinker made those. those. <laughs> Man, so <laughs> I was like, man, it's, it's just it was almost just surreal to actually see. Um, because, you know, obviously when you're younger, you look at Michael Jordan like he's like um, another human being, like, you know, something completely different. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so like, you know, to finally, yeah. So to finally like see the footage of him actually lacing up the sneakers that people nowadays wear, uh, it was just it was it was really cool to see that. So uh, I, definitely- I, I have a cool I have a cool story about being in the locker room before a playoff game. 